This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. This episode is brought to you by Casper Mattresses. Love a Casper mattress. Mm. Red hot comic book movie news. Shooting up your butthole. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet. Hey, 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 hey. We, we did that during the theme song. People yep. didn't hear it, but... What happens is James <laughs> mutes the microphone. So we can't... So there's no nonsense. There's no nonsense. <laughs> and, and then he plays the theme. So he cuts that in so we could be doing anything. Yeah. So we just went... Hey, 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 hey. And then James said, just for us. And I'm like... Why, 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 why save it for just for us? You know, why not give it to the whole world? That's a anyway, good point. you were saying something about our podcast. Yeah, it's a podcast. We do it. We're in it. But speaking of the whole world, yes. they said, our charity campaign has hit the $50,000. It's above hey, that. Hey, 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 hey. Incredible. Right now, we're uh, up to $53,416. Oh so we've not... Uh, the listeners have not only uh, uh, beaten the target, they've bloody smashed the target. And look, it's not even, uh, I'd say there's, there's a good chance we can get close to 60 because I haven't even put on a YouTube video. I haven't, we haven't even made any of the content yet, which with the bonus stuff that we get. I know Claire has secured some and some prizes. I think Ooh. she's got Harry's and Movement on board for some prizes. Very Harry's good. Harry's Movement watches. So look, there's still plenty of time to donate. You can ask a question for our Q&A. Mm-hmm. Uh, look, it's thank you, first of all. Absolutely. Because this is... We're going to answer all the questions. That's right. So that means we've got a Doesn't matter how long it takes. Oh, Last time that. it took two episodes. You made us come back and do it again. That's true, I did. You son of a bitch. I'd rather do it all in one sitting. We'll okay, a, cool. We'll Let's do, do it. A, we'll do a nine-hour podcast. Great. Just get it done. But uh, so what was I going to say? So look, hey, listen, you can still donate. You should because um, it's – thank you. First, it's I'm it, – I'm blown away, Mason. Oh, look at this guy. Look at this guy. He's lost for words. Oh, I'm so I, genuine. I've got some words. Oh. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> Anyway, it's linked below. Get into it. We only podcast. I can just ready? imagine just people veering off the road. They're like, "Oh, time to settle into my favorite podcast." First of all, wishful thinking on my part. But they're like, "Yeah, time to listen to a podcast that I'm familiar with." So I'll, I'll no surprise. I'll play it while I'm driving, and they get in the car. And it's like, oh, and then they veer off. or they join in. Yeah, hands join. off the wheel. Oh my god, Play with guys, tree. keep your hands on the wheel. Hands at ten and two. All right? right. Though I think goggles and gloves. Ten and two doesn't even apply anymore because apparently it's a pre-power steering kind of thing. Oh, like you don't. Know, don't quote me on that. Okay. Some, Google it. Don't do that. All right. Yeah. Hands at seven and two. Yeah. But the opposite hands. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, No Time to Die, the new Bond film, has yeah. a poster. Again, they're, they're, they're sticking with that Love Boat font. Yeah. It's not a good poster, though, is it? It looks like a Photoshopped situation. It looks like... F- I mean, they are Photoshopped, obviously. Well, yeah, but it looks like maybe like a Vanity Fair photo of, yeah. of, of Daniel Craig, just like... He's just just standing on some steps or something. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't give it. It doesn't give any particularly Bond vibes. No. I don't think people are saying, "Look at the ears on him." But I say, <laughs> he's always had those ears. Is that the, the, is that what the PR company is saying? Yeah. Look, look at the, the ears, ears on this guy. Him. Look at what he's doing. <laughs> I mean, everybody else works out the works out the regular rig. Yeah, he works out the ears. Yeah. <laughs> it's his head. A lot of people emailed in. And and tweeted at us to ask what we meant by rig last week. Oh, because some we people thought we meant dick. We t- yes, we talked about Christian Bale's amazing rig <laughs> yeah. in American Psycho. It's body. Yeah, is that? I thought is that? I guess that's. An oh, we were not talking thing. about his dick. <laughs> I mean, I was. <laughs> All right, yeah, me too. <laughs> So is that an Australian thing? I no, guess? I don't think it Rig? is. Maybe it's regional. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because it's a, you know don't you? We ever... just meant abs, basically. Yeah, true. Yeah. Do you ever say that to somebody? Look at the bloody rig on this bloke. <laughs> I As mean, in dick. Yeah, for sure, absolutely I do. Yeah. Yeah. You never said I'm just th- leaning into change rooms. <laughs> Look at this guy. So there you go. Uh, that means there's probably a, uh, a trailer coming for this soon. Mm. Uh, excited to see where this goes, I Same. guess. Um, nothing that I've seen from it is super exciting as of yet. Uh, but we'll see, won't yeah, we? We kind of we kind of really know a little bit where it's going again. It seems yes. to be it's like well, uh, Bond's retired, but then boom, Blofeld's back. Blofeld? Blofeld. Blofeld. Yeah, but he's... <laughs> They're like, Blofeld's back. Who? You know, Blofeld. Your brother or what? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, yeah, you've got you to come back. Yeah, it's like, great. all right, fine. Good. I'll do it. One, so I... one last mission. Yeah. Mm. We'll but build. then all the remaining missions. Yes, of course, uh, after that one. So, uh, I, you know, maybe by next week we'll be, t- we'll be talking about the Bond trailer. Maybe yeah. we'll do an episode on the Breaking Bad movie next week. Do you week think also? they would ever... Change the Bond actor in continuity? Do you think, think they so. ever give I th- him... I think that's what this might be. I think this might be the time that they... Oh, no, I they... meant if, keep him as James Bond, mm. but change the actor. 
and like give him face off surgery or something like that. Oh, I and thought like we got to put you in. I thought you meant like he's retired and the new bond. No, you know, new, the new 007, 007 right? No, 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 I'm, no, I don't think so. Yeah, uh-huh. Do you think so? No, wishful thinking though. Yeah, It'd is be it fun though? Or maybe he's in an accident and he comes back and he's... Got a new rig on him. Got a new rig on him, exactly. <laughs> Vaughn, we made your dick smaller. <laughs> Why? We found it was distracting you. <laughs> you. I mean, a lot of these missions, a lot of people are getting killed quite early on in the piece because you can't keep your hands off your piece, is all I'm saying. <laughs> so just, if, you, if there's no temptation... Yeah, we shave it back. Also, we've given you a little T-Rex arm, so you can't even reach it if you wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> Like Mark Wahlberg. Yes, exactly. Maybe they should get Mark Wahlberg. I know. Maybe I, th- I think the last <laughs> of my enthusiasm for the Bond franchise would disappear if they cast Mark Wahlberg. Wow, there you go. That's controversial. Yeah. And not inaccurate. Uh, so I guess we're talking about Spider-Man again. We'll do it one more week. Okay. Just about the Sony deal. No more Spider-Man talk. That's right. Uh, so apparently uh, Bob Iger, your dad, has said that uh, Tom Holland was instrumental in making the deal happen I think this is bullshit. I think yeah. this is just a like, you know who the real hero, hero is? Tom Holland. The, the superhero. And, and the there. fans. Yeah, that's the, the right. The fans there, yeah. Uh, Tom Holland collected letters and kisses from <laughs> all the fans <laughs> and he brought them to Sony and he was like, please, sir, <laughs> please. <laughs> I'll go on. That's all I have. <laughs> I can't go back to the chimney sweeping. He had his little, his little cap in his hand. <laughs> it's, it's just in his, in his chest like, go on. <laughs> <laughs> He's developed a cough. He's, yeah, he's got the consumption. <laughs> yeah, so it said. Do you think? Yeah, because it was it was all like he's he's flown there personally and he's what have you. So. I, d- I just don't believe it. Uh, Do you I, believe it? I look. It had never. I'm sure he did that, but I don't believe that that was the final thing that they. Oh, went. I see. You think that it actually? Okay, yeah, probably. Right, right, right. Okay. I mean, because why wouldn't you want to keep doing it that way? Yeah, because it's working for him, isn't it? I guess that's yeah. Well, that's true. Mm. But I mean. It, look, it never even occurred to me that this might be just marketing spin until you put it on my head. Because I'm so innocent. I'm just sending letters and kisses to all my active friends. And you put this cynicism in me. I don't know. I don't mind doing it. Mm. Uh, it said that he's a great Spider-Man. And I felt for him and it was clear that fans wanted all of this to happen. And, uh, he made a couple of phone calls. And sometimes companies, when they're negotiating, they forget that there are other folks out there that actually matter. Wow. Yeah, right. Your dad's got a lot of heart, Mason. Yeah, I mean, I mean he showed him... He, he showed him pictures of the crew mm. and their families. They I, just tore him up. <laughs> just tore him up. Like, nope. Bring in a celebrity, someone I care about. I mean, the crew gets. We'll just get another project. Regardless, I guess that's probably right? true. Does it really matter? But I think some of them follow. Like, if you've got a director, oh, a particular or director, yeah, they like, they bring their cinematographer. Mm. Apparently, bring their... John Watts is in talks again to oh, come back. Why wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I would still like them to kind of strip it back in, like away from the he's the new Iron Man and he's got the tech. And oh, absolutely, yeah. Mm-hmm. And now everyone knows who he is as well or whatever. Yeah, but again, I just want to see that result somehow. Yeah. Ma- Doctor Sorry, Strange, true, magic. Yeah. Magic, time travel, uh, clones, whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's someone else in a Spider-Man suit. So Exactly, all those fine. things. Yeah, that's it. Nobody saw that except him, maybe. <laughs> might, might have been. Could his. be. It could, and they're like, he will definitely go out and tell everybody he's Spider-Man if we just show him. This saves a lot of time. Yeah. Well, I mean, are we going to hack into this worldwide computer system or are we going to get this guy on board to mm. do this over the internet? Or we can just tell him and he'll tell everyone. He'll swing through the streets and be like, I'm definitely not I'm Peter not Tom, Parker. I'm not Tom Holland. Mm. I would like it to be a situation like the Batman 66 uh, movie and TV series where every now and then... Alfred will dress up as Batman mm. to, to rescue Bruce Wayne. But it's Happy Hogan. It's, that's exactly what I was going to yeah, say. Right. Correct. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> he just wanders up on stage. <laughs> hey. <laughs> he, puts the, he puts the suit on and, you know, Tom Holland pushes the button and it gets all really tight. He does <laughs> yeah. that and it doesn't change at all. It's just, I think it just, just winds like a... I think it'd like be a, like, a, like, a, like a girdle. Yeah, it just winds like an overextended <laughs> fan belt and then it just stops. <laughs> <laughs> He's, lo- he's loving the chef show. Yeah. He can't help himself. It's a great man. show. Good on him. Mm. It's a great show. Uh, what else we got here? Star Wars news. Star Wars news. Uh, the Mandalorian uh, directed Deborah. Oh, wait. Star Wars news. <laughs> oh, you don't like it. <laughs> no, remember? we've had a few weeks off, I think. So, do we get a do we, do we get a new poster for The Mandalorian? We did. I believe we got a few because it's a New York Comic Con weekend. Yes. There's, a, there's a couple of new reviews. We've got uh, Ms. Marvel is going to be in the She's Avengers gonna game. She's going to be in the new Avengers game. She's going to be one of the main playable Big characters. Big punching fists. Big punching fists. I think we're going to get a whole lot of different people. Does that uh, mean Mode 7 is back? Did it really go? No, that's true. That's how they make the fist really big. Is that true? Yeah. Mmm, delicious. It is delicious. (laughs) Okay, does that mean that it's going to be the main Avengers cast plus Ms. Marvel, or is it going to be main Avengers cast, Ms. Marvel, and a bunch of other? Or do you think she she gets a full 
run through the game? Or do you think she's got like a mini mission? I believe or the idea like is that like you can pick once you've unlocked a character, yep. you can pick that character for whatever mission. Oh yeah, cool, yeah. cool. But cool, I cool. don't know whether she's in the core group from the start or you yeah, unlock right. them like Ultimate Alliance or whatever. But yeah, there you go. Anyway, Star Wars news. Deborah Chow, who's directing The Mandalorian, she's going to be also directing the Obi Wan series. It looks like. Mm-hmm. And the other thing is, Joel Edgerton looks to be back as Owen Lang. Oh my goodness! Are you excited for that? Uh, yep, sure. He's a great actor. and It'd he be was, nice to know anything about Owen Lars. He didn't do anything. Yeah. I believe Joel Edgerton said the only things he did on those movies were like he'd just step out with like an oily rag, like yeah, rubbing right. his hands down. It's like, what's going on here? And, uh, and Klee Glass is like, ah. Remember Clear Glass? Nope. He's the guy from Broken Arrow, the Australian you're actor. Of, you're thinking of Clear Glass. No. Which is what's left after Owen Lars rubs the, oh, <laughs> rubs okay. the rag on the glass. Who's the actor from Broken Arrow who's Australian? Uh, oh, um, Jack Thompson. Yes, it's Jack okay. Thompson. He's got one leg. Yep. And he married Anakin Skywalker's mother or whatever, and then she was kidnapped by sand people or whatever. Yeah, I mean, Jack Thompson's lived a life, hasn't he? You know he has. He's alive, isn't he? Oh, he posed for... He posed nude for, like... Playgirl or Playgirl something. Playgirl or yeah. something or some yeah. Australian... Last year. Would Really? No. Wow. I knew that. I don't know why I said really. Great rig. What do you mean by that? <laughs> Which interpretation? Just the whole Jack Thompson situation, you know? I love it. Uh, the other thing is there's a Picard trailer. I saw that. Uh, there's some spoilers. We're flying through this. I don't like it. We <laughs> don't like... Well, we go two minutes. I feel like there's more faff than actual news here than we're doing. You know what I mean? <laughs> or is that standard? It's, it's, a, t- it's, a, it's, a, it's a mystery some weeks. Faff isn't it? doesn't mean dick either. Because, you know, I'm using some... <laughs> is that a <laughs> yeah. local word? I don't know. Uh-huh. But uh, so the Picard trailer, there's, there's some things that it spoils, which I, I kind of wish it didn't. Uh, it's got Well, we've got some appearance of... Well, I mean, for people who don't, maybe skip ahead. But yes. for people there's who... There's time codes as always. There's, yeah. there's, some new, there's some old characters who are back. Specifically, uh, Will Riker is back. Yes. Uh, and, and Troy. And, and Deanna Troy is yep. back. Uh, Data was back. Do we, did we know who's back? I think back? it's Data. It's Datums. <laughs> yes, that's right, yeah. I think that's a dream sequence, but I think he's probably yeah. just back in general. Uh-huh, yeah. mm. What do you think of that? It's always interesting when you get a character who's always like an immortal, ageless robot. I did think that. That crossed my you, mind. And then you, then you bring him back and they have aged. Yeah. No, I, I mean, mean he still well, looks good, but it's yeah. been... Well, he first played that character in the 80s. Yeah, that's you know, true. So mm-hmm. that's not, not a bad effort, but it's yeah. It's been about since Nemesis? Yes. Yeah. I remember uh, they talked talked about it around the time of Nemesis. I saw an interview with him. That actor, yeah. what's his name again? Uh, it's uh, Brent Spiner. Brent Spiner. And he was talking about how I can only play this for so long because yeah. I will age out of it. But I guess you can also de-age and whatever. But well, that's true. It doesn't look like they really did that. They just painted him gold and, <laughs> and right. sent him out into that yeah. field, didn't uh-huh. they? Uh, is this is this more or lessened your anticipation? More, I think. Mm. But I mean, it sort of fed into what I thought it was going to be, which is ragtag team. Ragtag team. He's, he's going. He's going rogue. It looks like there's a. There is. There looks like there's a warrior kind of Vulcan character in it. Yeah, mm-hmm. like a Legolas slash very Spock type. very intense eyebrows. Yeah. Well, they always do, don't they? But I mean, these are especially intense. What do you think that is? Is it his drive? Oh yeah, it probably is. Yeah. And yeah. he runs so fast that they've kind of oh yes, it's out. Uh, yeah, if it's uh. It's drag. Mm. What's happening there? He's in drag. Is what oh, I'm saying. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so I like the idea of him going back to the Federation. Is like there's a there's a disaster, and they're like you're not even part of the Federation. You're so anymore. old. You're so old. I like the I, I like the little moment in there, and again, it's kind of spoiled in the trailer. But mm. the, the there's a hologram of the Enterprise above him, and he has to be like Picard, P I C A R D. You know, from that, <laughs> from probably. That, yeah. you know. And he gets a visitor's badge. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. pretty good stuff. Mm. He's what 72, 73 now. Who knows? He's probably about that. Anyway, he looks great. He does. He's aged spectacularly. Yeah. I think they've they've really had to go like, oh, he's such an old, he's such an old, wizened old little mm. spindly man or whatever, and he looks, yeah, he just looks, he looks mostly the same. Yeah, he's going to have to fix that with acting. That's true. I think the thing about that guy is as well because he always looked like fifty ish. That's true. Because yeah. he's always been bald. Yeah. And he's always been like the same build. If they've got if they'd gone with originally what uh, apparently they'd planned to, which is him, Patrick Stewart with a wig. Did they have you really? seen have you seen that photo? I don't I've know. I've seen it, it from the I've seen the like the they had a flashback and they did the and he's got a wig and a flashback. Oh, that might well that might be it. Yeah. But I, I've, I've so seen, like the first episode they were gonna do a wig. Well I've seen it on on the internet as like here, this is test this is Picard test wig. Okay, well, let me t- oh, I can do this on my computer oh, on as nice. well. It's a brace to see the wig. Yeah. I've got excellent wig, Dar, so... Wig test. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, isn't it, is that, has it got Borg implants in there? No, maybe. That's not a bad wig, though, because yeah. it's like a thin there kind of wig. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, well, even if they put him in a wig then, they yep. could put him back in the wig. That's true, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Wigs yeah. are eternal. <laughs> That's true. 
See, I don't know. See, that's the thing about this a photo like this is I can't tell if it's an actual test photo of him wearing a wig mm. or they've just taken a press photo of him from the 80s and they've photoshopped a wig on. Yeah. Like it's just a deviant art or a bloody... Whatever. Uh, what's, what's that guy's name? Which one? Boss Logic. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's doing uh, actual stuff for like studios. Yeah, he's doing kind of uh, now, comic yeah. book uh, covers and stuff. Mm. Yeah, good for him. Isn't that cool that you can do that now? You can work your way up through the internet, like just through, like starting with fan art. And yeah. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. It that gives cool. us hope to all people. But that's also kind of like these days because uh, uh, fan art gets so much attention nowadays because all those websites need clickbait. And oh they're my like, God, you're not oh wrong. my God, it's Picard. But that's not it. Yeah, but if, there's, like, if there's a slight... You know, like there's a the rumor of a casting, yeah. like an Idris Elba. Exactly. It's like, yeah, it's like Robin in Suicide Squad 2. And you're like, oh, Robin in Suicide Squad, yeah. not bad. And then you're like, this, this is, is what it would, interpretation. interpretation of what it might be like. Yeah. And often it doesn't look anything like yeah. that, what it ends up being. Mm. But anyway, our hot scoop took off a little bit. Yes. Some sites were beholden to the rules of hot scoop and shot a poop. Others, like our former, former, f- former home, comicbookmovie.com, just, did, just didn't bother. Collings, I know you're listening to this. He runs Planet Broadcasting website and the socials and he, and he edits Suggestible. Websoid. <laughs> That's yes. how you say it in Australia. Yeah. Uh, I want you to go back through every episode and edit out the bit where we say comicbookmovie.com. <laughs> Make it hotmail.com. Yes, please. <laughs> With the official podcast of hotmail.com. Yeah. So, look, that's pretty poor form, Mason. Yes. The the the, the website that gave us our start. Yes. <laughs> is not kowtowing to our <laughs> stupid demands for even our though stupid we're, segments. That we're not even associated with yeah. the site anymore. Anyway. Bit of anyway. professional courtesy anyway, pre- from those dogs would be appreciated. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate the people who reached out and be like, make sure you put in the hot scoop thing. You know, we appreciate that. It helps yeah. every day, bro. Uh, What's that scoop again? I've forgotten. Idris Elba. Oh, it was yeah, Vigilante. An yep. anonymous yep. thing about who's who in the source. Well, we haven't squad. heard anything yet. So. No, we'll find out though, won't we? We will. Uh, did you hear that the Watchmen episode, the new show Watchmen, it premiered at Comic Con? I did hear that. And apparently it was very well received. We received a couple of messages from people who saw it. How many well. minutes of a standing ovation did it get? I think it was 40,000. They're still doing it. 40,000 minutes. Yeah, they're planning to hit 40,000. That's <laughs> their goal. Yeah. For charity? Or? No, 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 just for, just for the love uh, of the game. Is it, some sort of, is it some sort of Alan Moore magic ritual of some sort? <laughs> or summon a demon? Or he's cursed them to do a it. A squid-like demon <laughs> of some sort? Uh, so that's good news. Yeah. I mean, it's again, it's Comic-Con and you woo everything, but that's not bad news. So, nice, yeah. yeah. I think if anything, if anything's going to tip uh, Comic Con crowds the other way, is maybe a really bad adaptation of a beloved thing. Yeah, that's not incorrect. But then they will woo anything. Mm. So. But also with a pilot, you really don't know like what yeah. way it's going to go in general. It kind of they're always a little bit shaky generally, and then yeah. and then they, they can go any which way after that. Uh, but yeah, good. Did you hear that General Swanwick, which is the name of the general from the Batman v Superman universe, yes, is the one who Superman crashes the satellite in front of him and he's like, don't be fucking spying on me. And he's like, well, you work for us, Superman. And he's like, I'll laser you in half Yeah, if you keep spying on me. Yeah. Why did he drop that satellite out of the sky? That's so uncool. He could have brought it down and be like, look what I have. I can crush this. I'll put it back. Stop be following me. Or is it a true. better message to... Well, I mean, they go, if, they, if they stop following him, they'll start following other people. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, what does he care? That's a good point. He's not a good bloke, is what He's I'm one saying. He's one of the worst. <laughs> anyway, anyway, good riddance to General Swanwick. Yes, but he is Martian Manhunter. You know, I, I thought you were going to say he's going to be real to be Swan Neck. <laughs> he's got a beautiful curved the neck. Hero of the hero with a beautiful swan, <laughs> curved swan neck, yes. But he... Uh, Martian Manhunter, though, yes. yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, what was it? Zack Snyder released, uh, like, a... Was it storyboards? Story yeah, where it was going to be revealed at the end that he morphs into John John. Yes, uh-huh. uh, so that's cool. Yeah, apparently, uh, there's there's some set photos of that actor wearing a mocap suit, oh, like from okay. the past, and then nothing ever emerged from that. Yeah, so that might be that makes a lot that, of sense. That lean towards him having a m- way more superhero-y. I guess that also makes sense for him coming out at Comic Con because he revealed the Batman v Superman logo in the first place do you yeah, remember right i so don't he, remember that but okay he had so i guess he was going to play this bigger role mm. i know like the swan neck again. swan neck yes i know it was right there in front of us the whole time i can't believe i didn't say yeah but i the I, wick is the neck <laughs> i don't think we're ever gonna see it but there's some interesting ideas in here that unfortunately weren't we going to get justice league 2 by now as well you know what should have made a better movie then which one time around or every time Every time they had an opportunity to make a movie, they should have made a better movie. Than the, what we got. Than what we got, Sometimes yes. Sometimes there were some all right ones. Shazam was all right. Wonder Shazam was all right, right, yeah. They made Aquaman. Is that not good enough for you? Yeah. They made it. We went to the cinemas. I we remember saw that, yeah. 
a, a crab fought a shark or something at the yeah, end. Yeah, I remember. Seahorses. Who was on what side? Oh, yeah. Was it the octopuses were the good ones or were the squid? The oh, dolphins were against yep. the, the mermaid people. It's like a four-dimensional game of chess. <laughs> But like one of those ones you get at like a hippie store where it's a chess set, but it's like crystal dolphins. Ah, oh, beautiful. Mm. Beautiful. Remember yeah. that shop that used to be near us? Yes. Uh, Skulls and Bongs, which just <laughs> sold. It wasn't called Skulls and Bongs. That's what we call it. It just used to sell stuff like that. Yeah. Just pewter skulls and bongs. Oh, yeah. And that was pretty, or, or like a it's wizard. Broad sword. Yeah. yeah. A wizard holding a crystal. <laughs> yeah. Like with a, with a staff and the end of the yeah. staff is a crystal. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. Great stuff. Pretty good. I miss skulls and bongs. I Me think it's too. like a $2 shop now or whatever. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? Doesn't matter. I was going to ask what it's really called. You don't know. No, I don't know. Uh, we also got a trailer <laughs> this week for Birds of Prey. Yeah, we did. I made a trailer breakdown. If you want to check it out, I can link it below. It looks to be, well, it is an extension of the Harley Quinn character from Suicide Squad oh. and, and whatever. She's uh, got herself a... I wonder if there's there's a voiceover from her in the trailer. Yeah. And it's kind of like a little bit kind of hard-boiled detective novel mm. kind of voiceover. I wonder if that's going to be in the movie or that's trailer only. Oh, right. Yeah, good question. It is a good Anything question. Anything could be changed it? at any point. That's true. Mm. <laughs> they okay. might do two... Ver- this might be, you know, a, a shot at a Blade Runner style theatrical cut, director's cut. They'll they'll put it in for one and take it out for the other. Except both of them are bad. Yeah, both of them are bad, yes. Look, I think this looks okay, but I can't... I don't trust any of this... Yeah, well, any, it's interesting. Anymore. They've, they've yeah. taken a lot of uh, – this one is seems to be way more grounded than any kind of Suicide yes. Squad situation. It doesn't seem to be any kind of magic or even any, really any superpowers. Well, I, I well, guess there, there is the Black Canary character. So it depends oh, on what version of that if voice. If she has a sonic scream yeah. on it. I talked about it, yeah. in the video. But, yeah, that's that's exactly it. We well, do get kind of a big – and you were saying it's it's Black Mask's hideout. Yes. Kind of that big ma- mask – if you With will, the hands. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. So we, so we are kind of getting kind of some nods to maybe sixties, yeah, TV Batman or or old school Batman, where it's you know big props and such. I feel like this is, and I think I said this in the video, the video I did, but. The way that Suicide Squad was kind of reverse engineered to be more like this with yeah. the marketing, and they they uh-huh. put in the fun like title sequences when yeah, characters right. popped up. But this feels like that it's intentionally that from the start. Yeah. So this, I would say the trailer is more likely to be an accurate representation of what they've actually made here. Or they, this one doesn't test well, so they reverse engineer <laughs> it the other way. They go gun metal gray. And so the next, the when we get the movie, it's just like 95 minutes of Harley Quinn sitting in a car smoking, like <laughs> listening to like a surveillance device or something like that. And at the end she walks, she walks in and shoots a couple of people and leaves and that's the end of the movie. I said this to you uh, earlier this week. I'm I'm curious. I'm not sure whether I think Margot Robbie is good as Harley Quinn. Yes, but I don't know whether that plays in live action with the voice yeah. and everything yet. Mm. Do you know it's what I mean? Bit, it's it, accurate, yes. but I don't know whether it's, it's accurate. But it's piercing. Yeah, like an arrow, like an arrow, or a bird of prey, like a bird of coming prey coming at you. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I I, I just don't know. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and also, this trailer seems to be a lot. It seems to be. We've got the, and um, you know, it's a Harley Quinn movie, but mm. we're getting, you know, w- this this big dot of light that is Harley Quinn, yeah, and then just a bunch of people in hoodies and yes. and leather jackets, motorcycle helmets, or whatever. Give, give us, give us some more, give us some costumes. Come on, you, you. It's interesting because you also, when I said that to you earlier, the thing that I said earlier, oh yeah, you likened it to, to the um the Christian Bale Batman voice where you just kind of locked into this version. Forever, yeah. Because by the time it got to the Dark Knight Rises, it was people were like, this is funny and it's, why are you still yeah, doing it's it? it's so <laughs> stupid. And again, just give him a little voice modulator thing. Which is what they did in BVS. But I mean, like, do it by the third one. Oh, yeah, so he doesn't have to do it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't disagree with that. Mm. But uh, anyway, um, we'll Maybe see you. Maybe get a little voice modulator. Why would you, though? To make her voice... Normal. Normal. Yep. Hello. <laughs> I am... Is that a normal voice? Yeah, hello. Like an Australian man. So that's the kind of voice yeah, that I want. Right, yeah. uh-huh. Anyway, uh, it's out in February, so we'll see what bloody goes on there then. Yep. Okay. I'm, t- I'm reading this quote that I've got here. And I, oh, yeah, that's right. I was like, what have I written here? Is it from your quote, like the thing you did last? What was that thing you did last week? You just, oh, no, we did a caravan, of garbage, a caravan of garbage. And you just had a, you just had a series of unconnected that was thoughts. For, we did the real Terminator 3. For this week's Caravan of Garbage. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're doing a trilogy of Terminator 3s. Yeah, this this one was the realest Terminator 3 it there really is. It really is, yeah. Real, I mean, James Cameron 100% signed off mm. on this one. This is his baby. And it's not Terminator Jennifer. Jennifer. It's <laughs> not Terminator Jennifer. <laughs> what he named his daughter. <laughs> is my daughter Terminator Jennifer? <laughs> 
So this is from Martin Scorsese because there was a bit of outrage. Oh, this, this quote. Week okay, that, um, yeah. I'll read it out. It's, okay, it's in relation to Marvel movies. He said, I'll "I take d- it out of context. I read the it, whole thing. Through. All right. I don't see them. I tried. You know. Well, he said, "You know." You would never say, you, you know. know. Contractions of yeah. the common people. Agreed. But that's he's not, a common people. He's a regular guy from yeah, Jersey, no probably. He is probably. Probably. But that's not cinema. Honestly, the closest uh, I can think of uh, think of them, as well made as they are, with actors doing the best they can under the circumstances, is theme parks. It isn't the cinema of human beings trying to convey emotion, psychological experiences to another human being. So it's basically saying Marvel movies that you tried to watch aren't real movies and... Uh, the theme parks and whatever, which, you know, they kind of are like fun rides, a lot of yeah, them, anyway. For sure. Uh, again, like every time somebody lashes out against these... Big backlash. Uh, a big, and who cares? Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, mm. Martin Scorsese's got to be in his mid-70s at this yeah, point, I surely. Yeah, so, yeah. So, like, and again, I, I wonder in what context he saw one of these, which, which one, it, one was. it was. Which Thor did he see? Thor 1 or Thor 2? Yeah. He's, no. He's 76. Jesus. There we go. Yeah. All right. Mm. Um, and again, it's just personal taste. You, if you'd never seen a Marvel movie before and you saw Thor Ragnarok, yeah. you might be like, this is an amazing fun ride. Or you might be like, I don't understand what? any of this. Yeah. What is... Because you... It's a, it's, a, it's a Norse god being thrown into a sci-fi world. Yes. Fighting the Hulk. Jeff Goldblum. Jeff Goldblum's in it. Yeah. You might be like, this is amazing. Uh, or you might be like, what? no, no, you, this has gone too far. This Inde- Independence Day research and sequel has gone too yeah, far. Yeah, right. Because they're kicking some alien ass. Oh, my God. Prince Spider. Yeah, nice. Uh, but, yeah, so, and also, the, I guess the other thing is, he, he's a good director, so. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it's not like. There's a lot of time it's just some loser. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's true. But this yeah. time it's like a guy. I'm like, I respect this guy's opinion. Yeah, he, for he sure. Can say what he wants. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah, and I, I, I wonder what context he saw it in. Did like his grandkids show him one? I bet or? he doesn't know what one it was. Yeah, mm. might have been a DC one to be honest. Well, that's the thing. He didn't specifically say it was. And he said, I think he didn't. He say these Marvel movies. Oh uh, so yeah, he might, oh, that, might be Sorry, a, yeah. that might be that might be. And again, like I'm, I'm. I wouldn't condemn him for having an opinion no. on these movies, but I wonder if he meant like maybe you watch Dick Tracy from nineteen ninety one. Exactly. Well, maybe. The, well, when people go, oh, I don't like these Marvel movies. They sort of these days because there's so many of them. They sort of it's sort of an umbrella yeah. that refers to all superhero movies. So, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I believe Dick Tracy was nineteen ninety. I'm sorry, everybody. Wow. I Google that. And he talked into his watch. Yeah, of course, I remember he talked into his watch. Remember when we had that. 10 minute <laughs> discussion about the Dick Tracy movie, yeah. A few weeks back? Yeah, I remember. Can't remember what episode, but bloody hell, I enjoyed that. <laughs> there were so many ins and outs because Warren Beatty's obligated to. What, we know. Go, yeah, I know, we but know. I think people haven't seen it. <laughs> okay, right. I mean, who sticks around to the very end of this? That's true. Not you, I know that. You're normally out the door. I, mean, I have to use door. offcuts of whole episodes <laughs> to, right. to piece this <laughs> episode together. Anyway, apparently The Irishman is great. It's screened and everybody loves it and it yeah. goes for like three and a half hours. It's coming yep. to Netflix soon. But again, it was early screening and who knows. And I mean, it very, I mean, it's pretty bloody, pretty, pretty bloody ironic of Scorsese. I mean, he cast De Niro as Stilt Man in that movie. <laughs> so. But it was real. Yeah, it was it real. It was gritty and real. No, no CGI there. Yeah. Real stilts. Or is it Pacino with the stilts on? Wow, tall. <laughs> That's good stuff. <laughs> Thanks. Big steps. <laughs> <laughs> Big man doing big steps. <laughs> Mason, you know this, but I like my mattresses like I like my podcasts. How's this going to go? Here we go, everybody. This is going to be a Designed by humans for humans. I don't want some oh, that's quite nice, actually, algorithmic that. podcast or mattress. Exactly. Meep, meep. I'm a robot. I'm going to design a mattress for you. Oh, it's made of rocks and, <laughs> and, and sticks and scaffolding. No good. No, it's bad. It's Maybe of... good for a robot, but robots don't even yeah. sleep. What about the rocks and sticks, though? That was a weird thing to, to yeah. put in there. It's like that rocks and sticks podcast that's designed by a robot as well. It's no good. It makes no sense. <laughs> this makes sense. This makes perfect sense the, to me, the, Mason. The, the, the thing I'm mentioning doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. No. Because P- Casper uh, products are cleverly designed to mimic human curves, providing supportive comfort. For all kinds of bodies. How much of your life would you assume that you would spend sleeping? How much? Give me a ballpark figure. All of it? (laughs) A third. You were close. You were two thirds off. So the time I'm doing the podcast, but I'm definitely sleeping them, right? Yes, yes, yes. This is just a beautiful dream where I get (laughs) to advertise mattresses, right? That's what this is? That's right, exactly. Because that's what happens in my dreams. I just drift off. I get on my Casper mattress, Mm. which has just the right amount of sink and bounce. And I get on it and I'm like, hmm. Beautiful, the most just just lets me live my, my best life in my dreams. Oh, absolutely. Where I'm on this podcast, being like, buy a Casper mattress, you know? <laughs> Which, 
That's what dreams are made of. Yeah. The experts at Casper, who are people, work tirelessly to make quality sleep surfaces that cradle your natural geometry in all the right places. They, they are people or mm. they're robots so advanced they're indistinguishable from people. I'll take that. I Think don't about care. It, yeah. I'll do whatever. Yeah, right. If an AI gets to the point where it's indistinguishable from a human being, isn't that just another form of life, Mason? Absolutely. Mm. We're getting to the deep... This this philosophical discussion has just the right amount of sink and bounce. I mean, people think this is a riff, but this is actually in the talking that's points the, that they gave us. That's the copy that they gave us. I don't understand, but I mean, I'll go with it. I'll just I'll just read a thing verbatim, including this bit where I say I'll just read a thing verbatim. <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the original Casper mattress, which is the one you have, combines mm. multiple supportive memory foams for a quality sleep surface with the right amount of sink and bounce, as mm -hmm. mentioned. Breathable design that helps you sleep cool and regulate your body, temp body temperature. It's heating up here, Mason. Mm. We've come out of winter. We're now going into the hotter months. I wouldn't even notice. You, you, you're doing it all year round. Exactly. It doesn't matter. 365 days a year, 24-7. You are 365 sleeping. degrees, my oven that I've <laughs> left on in my house right now. doesn't matter. As soon as I get home, get that bed, not. Mm, regulated body <laughs> temperature feels good. They've also got over 20,000 reviews with an average of 4.8 stars across Casper, Amazon and Google. Casper is fast becoming the internet's favourite mattress. And of course, they have that wonderful unboxing experience. Comes in a little box, size of like a mini fridge. Open it up. What's in there? A regular fridge? No, mattress. That's even more amazing. <laughs> I know, because you'd expect a fridge, wouldn't you? Yeah, but some you kind of fridge. Yeah. Actually, uh, this is great, Mason, because... People listening to this can get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com slash theweeklyplanet and use this offer code, theweeklyplanet, all one word. Terms and conditions do apply for that. But if you want $50 towards select mattresses, visit casper.com slash theweeklyplanet and use offer code, theweeklyplanet. Terms and conditions apply. Please get a mattress if you want one. Get a mattress. Now I've got to wake up mm. and, and come do the podcast where I'm going to talk about selling mattresses. Wonderful. But I don't want to leave this beautiful dream where I'm currently selling mattresses. Oh, man, it's tough, isn't it? It's tough. It's like a waking. decision to make. <laughs> wow, what an ad. We're back from the ad. And we're just in time for what, Mason? Talking about Joker? We are talking oh, about Joker. Oh, yeah. Long time coming. It feels like uh, I saw this 100 years ago. Me too. When people first started talking about this movie. Yeah. 100 years ago. Mm. Uh, do you want to talk box office first? Sure. Okay, what are the numbers? $80 million? Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> 92. I think I saw it. I think I saw a tweet. You were wrong, but oh, okay. the fact that you even got, you said millions. I said millions of dollars. $80,000? <laughs> Which is just the price of the bloody popcorn and the oh, drink, am I right? You're not wrong. Yeah, for me. Upsize. I've got to play my bloody mortgage. There we go. Uh, so it's the largest October opening ever. We do good jokes here. We do. It's true. Uh, and, we, um, and like this movie, it holds a mirror to society and That's cinema. True. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Beat, uh, it beat Venom. That was the last score. Oh, yeah. uh, the last time that uh, I think Venom. Maybe Scorsese saw Venom. Yeah, he might have. Yeah. Uh, I mean, he'd remember Venom, though, wouldn't what, he? What is the what is a movie that could? What is a Marvel slash DC movie that could lure Scorsese in? I know we're we're, we're not talking about this. Like anymore, to get him watching it. Yeah, I think like, Batman v Superman could lure him in because it was like gritty and real. It was supposed to be. Oh, okay, right. Yeah. And I guess it's got two. Like, even if you don't know superheroes, you know, you know, Batman, Batman v Superman, v Superman yeah, the movie for sure. Yeah, yeah. Even if yeah. you don't know, <laughs> that's it. right. Yeah. yeah. You, you were aware of the concept of a dawn of justice. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so that's $92 million in the US, but it also made $57 million on top of that in the international market. So for an R-rated movie in particular, this is crushing. What did what it what make in China? Are uh, they famously afraid of clowns? <laughs> I don't actually know. I think that's just all international markets, unless it's yeah. not out there yet, which is entirely possible. Mm. We saw this about two weeks ago. Yes. Uh, what do you think of it? <laughs> okay, you know what I'd like to talk about first? We should talk about the movie... On its merits yep. in a minute, but I think what you know, or what what people said, especially pre-release, yeah. and what we've seen in a lot of reviews, is people going, "Oh my god, this is such a this is a yeah. way more mature take on a on a comic book movie that you've never nobody's ever dared to do before." Oh my god, it's raised the bar for a comic book movie. Oh my god, it's redefined the comic the genre, book movie genre. genre. Yeah, I would probably humbly suggest that if a movie is going to redefine a genre, mm. it should probably contain at minimum one element of the genre that it's trying to redefine. And I would suggest yeah. that this movie does not contain any elements of the comic book movie genre. Even beyond, though it has... Beyond a, na a, ca yeah. a couple of names and places yes. and a character who is superficially similar to the character in the comic yes. books. I think That's it. I think it's interesting... Uh, First of all, I didn't. I thought this was okay. Sure, I didn't love it uh -huh. at all. Uh, and there's elements of it that I really liked. Yes, but for me, this fell down in a lot of places. Okay, picture this. Yeah, 
The same movie we watched. I know what you're going to say. Yeah. Do so you? I, I was going to pose you the same question. Really? But but do you take out the Joker element? No, but okay, say? well you do, but here's the thing. Mm. Same same movie. Yep. But rather than a man who puts on like white face paint and dyes his hair green, he puts on a tank top and he shaves his head. And instead of calling the movie Joker, it's called Dom Toretto. <laughs> and it's the same movie, <laughs> except he's like a he's like a little weak broken down man and he, he, he he's, he's so afraid but society keeps beating him down and eventually he snaps and he steals Robert De Niro's DVD player <laughs> and he starts a life of crime and then all the critics are like oh my god this has redefined the street racing genre oh my god this is a ma- such a mature take on this character that nobody would dare to do before and then you'd be like I didn't really see any street racing in this movie. And they'd be like, yeah, well, car chases for children, aren't they? <laughs> car chases, this movie's moved beyond the, that sort of, that's what, it's about the human drama, isn't it? You're fine, but it's not. Yeah. yeah. I think it's one of the. I, the movie's I, just called Furious, actually. Yes, it's Furious. just called Furious. <laughs> it's and called, it's the same font. It's called Dominic. Oh, Dominic. <laughs> so, yeah, I was, but the question I had for you, which was similar, was if you took the Joker out of this, yes. do you think people would be like, this redefined anything? Because I think they'd just be like, it's like Taxi Driver. And yeah, King I think Comedy, they'd be like, that? this is a very solid Scorsese homage. Yes. I think they'd be like, I think they'd be like, this is a compelling performance I'd say this is even a very compelling performance of a character a troubled person in a very predictable script yes. situation so, yeah like even if you haven't seen the trailers you'd be like well I think this guy's gonna do this mm. and he but, does like this is this you'd be, I think at a certain points in this movie you'd go okay well they're very heavily foreshadowed that this is gonna happen yeah and then it does and yeah you, and, absolutely and yeah and also if you've seen King of Comedy taxi driver. Yep. Then you know where this is going to go. But sp- speaking of that, one of the elements that I really enjoyed of this was the way that they recreated. It's it's set in 81. That's where yes. it kind of wraps up. Uh-huh. It's dead on. Like it got, it's got that slimy New York Ghostbusters yeah. taxi driver well, it, feel. Well, it does. But yeah. I also think that a lot of this movie, they've gone, okay, what are the devices you can use to lend mm. sort of filmic... Yeah, credence to a movie. Okay, we'll have the uh, have have a dirty new. You know, it's Gotham, but it's like if yeah. you want if you want a movie to feel raw and authentic, you put it in dirty New yes. York from back in the day, like during the garbage strike. Whenever it's, I mean, it's, it's hot, Gotham, mate. Yeah, it's hot. It's hot <laughs> and it smells like garbage, like Gotham does. Yeah. And then you have the character like lose a bunch. You have the actor lose a bunch of weight and smoke all the time. Yes. And then you go, okay, well that's authentic, that's isn't thing. it? Yeah, absolutely. But what I'm saying, yes, it is like a trope that they've yeah. borrowed to make it look like a certain type of film or have invoke a certain feeling, but it is done flawlessly. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of those background old buildings and old cars that that they do with CGI or whatever, but you know, you never notice any of that is what I'm saying. Street toughs. Street toughs and and the like. Playing stickball. Playing stickball, graffitis, Mm -hmm. all those kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that element of it is just, it's incredible because you don't think about, it's like, it's the same with once upon a time Hollywood. It's that you don't think about that. Yeah. Like, it's amazing that they recreated it. But as you're watching it, you're not thinking about that they did recreate it. Well, that's it. true. And yeah. I think even like I, I even more so than probably Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, which, mm. which, which is way more of kind of a heightened reality. Yeah. And it kind of feels, it, it feels like we're in a movie because Tarantino loves movies. So we're in a movie sure. watching, a, we're watching a movie about making movies. But this feels like, mm. it feels like a movie that they filmed in the 80s. Yes. Which is credit, credit to them for doing that. Absolutely. Credit for the, to the production team for doing that. And if we're talking crediting things. Oh, yes. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix is excellent in this movie. Sure. Mm-hmm. His performance is like the, what he's supposed to do. He does yeah. all of those things. Uh-huh. He's clearly like seriously committed to it. And he thought about the character. It, like the even the way he he's got this clown running kind of walk in and thing that he does, which is like he's always kind of wearing the shoes and the physicality of it. He does. He's wha- always wearing shoes. No, like the big clown shoes. Sorry, oh, I see. Right. But he even runs like that when he's not wearing them. Uh-huh. Like the big kind of duck yeah, walk right, around. Uh-huh. But, Just like the comic book character of the Joker. Yes, but I'm also kind of like sick of that shit at the same time. Like, <laughs> yeah, right. Do you know what I mean? Because like he does so much dancing like by himself. Yeah, sure. Like in front of the mirror or like no on, one's watching. Like no, and that's the lesson that he learns in this he dance. Like no one is watching. Way too fucking much in this movie. Wow. <laughs> so that's where you're putting your foot down. Yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. Like I get it. You've, you've, you're experiencing this. This mental breakdown. Mental breakdown or this moment of realisation in your life and, you know, you're coming mm-hmm. off your meds and, you know, you're experiencing these emotions again or for the first time. I understand it, but it's like... Do something else so, with that. Turn it down, mate. I also feel like... So so if you haven't seen it yet, I, th- I feel like they went, okay, the Jack Nicholson Joker, uh, when he 
got shot and fell into the vat of chemicals. When he came back, he couldn't not smile. He had yeah. a, he had a like a, a condition where he couldn't stop smiling. And I think they went, how can we just do that in this? Oh, he's got a condition yeah. where he can't stop laughing. I think because they didn't want to do the, they didn't want to do that. Obviously, yeah. they didn't mm-hmm. want to do like the comic book because even Todd Phillips has talked the way he tricked, not tricked, convinced Wyke <laughs> Phoenix to do it. <laughs> no, he tricked him. Probably. But, you know, because he was up for Doctor Strange for a yeah, long right, time and uh-huh. he didn't want to commit to the multi... I think he would have yeah. crushed that as well. He would have mm. got so thin and smoking all the time. Oh, my God. So much dancing. Oh, my God. Imagine his grey temples. Ooh. <laughs> the grey of the grey. Wearing, wearing those gloves, you know. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. He would have been great. Uh, but... He was like, "What we're gonna do? We're gonna we're gonna make a comic book movie, but we're actually making a real movie." Mm, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And that to me is like, hold your fucking horses! Like, it's yeah. not. This isn't that much better than a lot of just regular gangster movies. I think this movie this movie feels to me like it'd be. Uh, people would be like, "This is a, if it was on Netflix." People would be like, "This is a real. This is a real forgotten, like an an, un, an unseen yeah, right. gem." People would really b- get behind this. If it wasn't the Joker, or you just mean in yeah, in just a, if it was just a regular yeah. movie, I think. Yeah, pr- you're probably right. Yeah. Mm. So uh, what I think, I'm not really mad about this, but I thought it was. <laughs> I'm mad. You Mason. sound like you're no. mad about. It. You sound like you're mad online about. No, this. there's just people that they put in this that they don't use properly, and it's because it's mostly it's just Arthur Fleck for the entire thing. Really, you follow yeah, right. like there's Zazie Beetz and there's Robert De Niro and Mark Maron, and there's a bunch of other people who are excellent actors, yeah. and they they maybe get five minutes each yeah. mm-hmm. throughout the entire yeah. thing. And mm-hmm. but that's not so much a complaint. It's more like. I don't. I don't even know what it is. Maybe it is a complaint, right? <laughs> yeah, but I. Not that they were. Un, not that they were necessarily underused. Probably Mark Maron and Zazie beats more so than, yeah. than De Niro because he has like a kind of a big kind of moment in this. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it kind of felt like you got these people and they, they don't get they get they get really yeah. no more than the clown union that he's yes. in. All the, the guys, in the, the boys in the clown union get more screen time than Robert De Niro. That's that's not incorrect. Yeah, oh. I. I also think that, you know, because people are talking about how, I, I, I don't believe that this movie, there's a lot of talk in the media about, like, is it going to be responsible for shootings in cinemas and all those kinds of uh-huh. things. I think if someone's going to do that, they're just going to do it anyway. I don't think, it's the same with video games. I don't, I think, yeah. you know, if you don't, I don't think people who play a video game event, it's going to influence them to do terrible things. Yeah. I'd, but I think, I think maybe hysteria in the media yes. over... Well, this is definitely if somebody wants to make the absolute maximum amount of impact, yeah, that's when they're going to do it. This is to be the perfect to do it. Ah, primo, primo, prime time to do this. Yeah, Yeah. that's what I'm talking about. So I don't think, yeah, I I, because I don't think there's anything in this which is particularly shocking or devastating. Or I was like, oh my god, I can't believe they went there. This it was all like, oh yeah, for me, I get it. Yeah, maybe I've seen too many movies, but again, hmm. I think if you go in expecting, you know, Avengers. Yeah. Then maybe some of this will shock you. Sure, but I think yeah. if you go, well, it's it's Scorsese and it's it, it, et cetera. It's, yes. it's gonna be, if you've seen any of the trailers, I don't think you'll be shocked by any of this. What I think was interesting as well, though, is that Todd Phillips, even though he's made this movie about holding a mirror to, I hate saying this, but you know, to society <laughs> and a depiction of mental health and like the the culture of uh, white men and finding their place in society and and mm-hmm. all of those kinds of things and and like the the one percent and and the downtrodden and all yeah, those right. kinds of things. But he he doesn't want to engage in that conversation. When people ask him about it, he's like, "Well, I think it's ridiculous that you think this movie. You made this movie, yeah, right. You've uh, and this question, this movie raises a lot of these questions. Yeah, shouldn't it's okay for people to ask you these questions yeah. in regards. Why did to, you make it then? If, yeah, why if make you, it then? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Oh, I don't. I don't think it's a bad thing to pose yeah. these questions. It's a good. But I, it's I think clearly, it's, it's to clearly, bring it up. Yeah. it's clearly an allegory for now. Like yeah. a lot of it, but they've given us some distance because it's in the early '80s or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. Why? Why did you? That's what I'm saying. And I think it's just because... Also, why is Thomas Wayne such a meanie in this? Well, people are. It's the real. Again, like, <laughs> I, you, if you want to put in. If you want to make this a comic book movie mm. and you want to make, again, you need one element. You need a couple of elements that you go, oh, okay, just saying Thomas, the, the Wayne family, Thomas yeah. Wayne. If you're going to put in a Thomas Wayne, give him some of the characteristics of any version of Thomas Wayne yes. we've ever seen in the comic books or the movie. And or the movies. In this, he's just some rich prick. See, I, that's the thing, though. I didn't mind that because I think the public, I found it interesting that the public face of him is this kind of guy who's, who's talking about being... The, for the good of Gotham and I'm going to be mayor for the good of Gotham and you yeah, people right. need me because I'm going to mm. drag you out of the muck that you yeah, live right. in. But yeah, you're right. It's not Thomas Wayne, but I'm not real. In this universe that they built, I'm not mad that it's not. I am like mad. The golden I'm heart mad of online. 
Because again, it's just a guy. But yeah, well, but the but one thing though that I am kind of confused about is this version of the Joker is an absolute dead shit. Like he cannot, <laughs> he's not a supervillain. He's a very lucky, dumb, troubled human being. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. Who lucks his way through every event, which kind of, not even, he's, he's down, he's like, obviously. Yeah. Okay. Should we do spoilers? Sure. Let's do it. Uh, best, but yep. only for the performance and the New York. All right. Uh, it's For me, it's really on that. Yeah, right. I thought about this a lot. Yeah. Because well, w- when we were sat there, we, we, we you mentioned this last week because we saw it with Broden. Yeah. Broden loved it. I was like, uh, and you were, when you came out. I turned, I, I, I hated it. And I turned to both of you, <laughs> expecting both of you to be like, like two, two thumbs down, Joaquin Phoenix style in Gladiator. Like, <laughs> and, and I was surprised by those, those reactions. Yeah. I'm going to say worst movie. I'm going to say worst movie ever mm. in the sense that, he danced too much. Yeah, he danced too much. But it's I f- I even feel like I think it would be an achievement if you people are like oh my god this is a mature take on the on the comic book movie or whatever. I think it'd be way more of an achievement if you made a movie like this in the context of a superhero universe. Like Watchmen? No, like guess- like like the DC universe. If yeah, you, right. if you if you gave us and a character we cared for, a performance we really liked mm. in a DC universe where there are there is a Superman and a Batman, in, but, you know, yeah. that's not important. You make us feel for this character. Yes. I would say that's much more of an achievement and build in continuity. Like, you know, Endgame maybe is a, a thrill ride or whatever or an yeah. amusement park ride, but the the I, the sheer magnitude of all, you the know, ten, parts, ten years yeah. of continuity and mm. putting it together and still going, okay, and, and we care about these characters. I think that is... Incredibly yeah. impressive, but to get a completely blank slate or do Taxi Driver Light and the Joker, yeah, it, yeah. is is not my like. It's it's. I would imagine it's quite easy to make us feel for this character in so far as he is not, and I mean, you know, not approving of anything that he ever did. But go, mm. okay, I I sympathise with the plight that you're in, yeah, because you are not a insane mass murderer who's who's ruined so many lives for decades, yeah. and might be. Immortal, and that time you made Superman kill his wife. Yes, in a parallel universe yeah. or whatever. Like I don't, I I don't care about that guy, but I do care about just a troubled man who needs some help. But that's not the Joker, is it? That's yeah. not. I, well, that's the thing, and I think this will go spoilers. Yeah. And I, so anyway, worst movie. Worst ever. movie ever. Because yeah. I think it's got some lot. Of, it's got a lot. It's got some redeeming stuff. It's an interesting yes. story to be told. But yeah, I agree. I think it does. I think it's not as compelling as I kind of hoped. It would yeah. be, but you're. I, I, that's interesting you say that because I think that because comic books, the good ones, do a really good job of taking existing characters and then building a story around it, which can be it can be fun, it can be tragic, it can be whatever. Yeah. But I, yeah, you're right. This is kind of like Taxi Driver, and we've just snuck in a little bit of the Joker. Yeah, and it's like, and I, I feel audiences. like again, if if imagine being someone who you know he's being beaten down by society, and there's also everyone looks up to these amazing people who can yeah. fly and save the world and you've, you've got that on your plate as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's an extra moving part that I thought and would be And they could be the 1%. Yeah, Still a metaphor. Yeah. Anyway, we're doing some spoilers. What are we going to spoil? Absolutely are. Well, what I was going to say is that, okay, so the thing that kicks off the event in Gotham, which was such a big deal and, cause, and there's clowns rioting in the streets, is that the Joker, he, he shoots three Wall Street guys who are attacking him on the subway. Who know all, one of them knows all the lyrics to send in the clowns. <laughs> like the whole thing. It's the 80s. Oh, yeah, they didn't have much else to Everybody do, did they? Everybody knew it. Yeah, that's, yeah. I guess that's true. They used to sing songs on the pianolas. They used to sit around. Oh, in the subways, yeah. yeah the While subways, you're waiting yeah. for your train, there's just a pianola there. And, you... and they're going for it. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I also think that would it be in, in this horrible city where people are dying left and right yeah. and three people are murdered... Would anyone notice? Would anyone notice? And I think maybe, I guess, but then I guess in answer to that, maybe they would because they were rich Wall Street dudes. Yeah, right. And mm-hmm. that's why it's a big deal. If it was three homeless people, people would be like, whatever. Yeah, right. So I guess in answer to my own question, I guess yeah. that's the reason it kind of took off yes. in, in the media. But I, I just, the idea that people, everybody just like dressing up as a clown in homage to this yeah, clown right. killer, I just, I couldn't, something about it I just couldn't, Buy, yeah, yeah. It didn't. There'd seem... be a certain barrier, I think, uh, just in your own mind. If you're like, should I dress up as a clown and get shot by the cops? Probably. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I will actually. Yeah. And I think also uh, he feels very much like the proto 
Joker. Like even by the end, when yep. he's technically, I guess, fully the character, I didn't think he's he's he hasn't got dastardly schemes. He's yeah. just he's like unhinged and unwell and not particularly smart. Not particularly sp- and now we're gonna get him eventually. Yeah. I feel like regardless. Mm. And at the end, it didn't prove to me that he'd outsmarted anybody. No. He was just unpredictably violent. And I think the Joker is more interesting than just a guy. Yeah, who kind of inadvertently starts a movement. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, cool, people can, I'm seen. Yeah. People see but me I, I, I think maybe the, the question, again, another question that will, maybe will be asked to Todd Phillips until the day he dies is, is this the real Joker? Yeah. Or is this, ha, has he in fact inspired somebody else in that crowd to become yeah. the real Joker. That's kind of interesting. Or does he come back in 10 years when Bruce Wayne's older and, you know, is he, does he grow to be this version of the Joker? Yeah, movie? yeah, yeah. Because the bit, when they were doing the... Where's he going to go to, though? Supervillain boot camp? There isn't one in this universe. <laughs> Maybe there isn't. There's no Taskmaster. Yeah, I guess so. they're, they're right. Yeah. But I just the bit when I'm like, oh, they're doing the Bruce Wayne's parents movie. Oh, my like, God. Are you kidding me with this shit? And they, absolutely, and they had to get the they pearls in. They did the in. pearls and they did it. And I'm, I'm like, I just saw this. Yeah. Do we need to do this every fucking time? Well, like, again, <laughs> they, they had to because otherwise... Not a, it's not a DC movie, I is it? I guess it's not. That's how they tied it in. They're like, oh, my God, this will be so poignant. No, it isn't. Uh, that's the thing. Like, it's not clever or it's not like what a, it's not what a twist. It's just it feels lazy. Yeah, That's right? what it felt like. Or it felt like a – but you didn't see this coming. We did, though. <laughs> I did. We really and, did. And I didn't want it to happen. Yeah. As soon as the Zo- we saw the, the marquee for Zorro yeah. come up, I'm like, I'm like oh, oh, no. no. <laughs> they're, I, I, I'm like, fingers crossed. Okay, hopefully – it's just implied. Yeah, you see them walk off. And I you go, okay, yeah. well, but then they're like, okay, well, Thomas Wayne's got to get it again because he's a prick in this yeah. universe. So. Yeah, that's it, exactly. Uh, was it funny? I think there was like There's one funny bit, moments. There's I... a moment where he, uh, he's he been given the gun and he drops yeah. it in the hospital. That's that was funny. Good. There's a moment where he – he, they're all hospital-based. There's a moment where he runs <laughs> into the hospital door because it's exit only. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's not bad funny. either. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when he suffocates his mother, that's funny. <laughs> you know, we all laughed. All, all great when stuff. When it turned out he'd imagined his relationship with Zazie Beetz. <laughs> you know, and he – That was – oh, sorry, my, my computer just went dung. And when that happens, people – like look around like it was their computer. That was mine. I'll just mute it because like you can't hear it. Doesn't yeah. matter. All right, neither here nor there. <laughs> yeah, abs- and I thought that Zay- that's just a little something for the listeners. I was, <laughs> I was. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get to enjoy it, but you know, yeah. that's, that's the sacrifices about we you, make for it? the yeah. listeners. You know, I also thought that Zazy Beats thing was kind of. I was happy that he wasn't an incel character. Sure, right. And uh-huh. then when it was revealed that he'd imagined it all, it was kind of like, oh, that's not as interesting. Not that interesting. Yeah, right. Kind uh-huh. of, it's kind of it felt pretty rote to be like yeah all of this mm-hmm. you know but then it, but here's the thing but it also leaves the door open for literally anything yeah, the, in this yeah. movie could be a could have he could have imagined anything mm. maybe he maybe the entire movie was his imagination maybe but and he and realistically he is the super genius dastardly joker who's been in a mental institution for 20 years and once he escapes he's just going to be regular joker brilliant brilliant right you know what else is brilliant What's after that? the clown riots and the two cops get beaten up on the subway and he goes yeah. to robert de niro's show and the only reason he is there because they made fun of him and then for some reason invited him on as a regular guest. What kind of... Even though he's clearly unhinged. Yeah. And who filmed that, for one? Let's put that aside. People well, aren't in comedy clubs like bootlegging comedy. No, but I comedy. think there was a... You know, look, mechanically, early in the movie we see there's like a closed circuit TV and we're seeing another comic on it. Yeah, but why? I don't know. <laughs> that's what I'm, maybe, that's maybe for tapes you shop them around. You yeah, go, oh, here's you my do. tape and I'll yeah, send it to the Tonight wrong. Show or whatever. But... Is this a common thing in – were they so stuck no. for material in late, on late-night talk no. shows in the 80s that they went, let's just make fun of this guy? Yeah, let's get him on. It's part of my monologue. And the crazy thing about it is when he goes on after the clown riots, the cops are beaten up, he's sitting in clown makeup. And they go, sure. So that's, and, uh, but Mark Maron is like, maybe we shouldn't because – and Nero's like, this will be fine. This isn't a political thing. What do you think's going to happen here? Yeah, all right. Think 10 fucking seconds into the future. <laughs> Why is this guy here? This clearly mentally unbalanced man yeah. who's turned up in clown makeup yeah. during a clown riot when a clown murdered people. You Even if it's not him, yeah. do you think that this is going to go the way you couldn't get in, you, 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 couldn't get in you couldn't get in Dr. Ruth, famous <laughs> fill-in guest on late night talk shows in the 80s. You couldn't get in Tony Randall. <laughs> Perennial, whatever, it's, just, it, just to fill in, like they. And I know it's the eighties, but they didn't check him for a gun. Yeah. They didn't float any questions with him beforehand. Yeah, of what they were going to ask him. Mm. They just that guy could have done anything. He could have had so many bombs on him. Yeah, yeah. 
And it's like or a, a whoopee cushion. That's right. Imagine Robert is, De Niro sits oh, down and embarrassing. Bah, wow. And the fact is, and then he, he just keeps poking him. Yeah, metaphorically, not literally. Yes, exactly. And that speech, just bangers. Ugh. Yeah. Well, okay. There we go. You know what? I was, uh, we were discussing this yeah. uh, on the podcast moments ago, yes. and I'm like, you know what? We, there was some compelling stuff in there. I'm, um, you know, maybe I shouldn't give it worst movie ever. And then until just they remind, say it, then he's yeah. just like, here's my motivations. I'll just tell you all my motivations. Because people were mean to me, and people step over homeless people, and it's like. You're well, right. I won't be stepped over yeah. anymore. But it's like, you're right, but we get that from the from the stuff we from saw the in the movie. And it's it's the same thing with the Thomas Wayne Martha Wayne being murdered thing. We get it. Yeah. And I think yeah, you open up the door there for a speech and has to have something interesting to say. But not just flat but it's out. It's not just. Uh, I don't know why it's like. And this is what's wrong with society. It was essentially like he get he gets up and he's like, "Why are you so mad?" And it's like because. Because I was, I live with my mother and it's very sad. And then people make fun of me at my work and these children stole my sign. And then I, he's just recounting the plot of the movie that's happened. And then, then I got a gun and then I dropped it and I got fired. And then I, I met a lovely lady, but it turned out she was imaginary. And so I got really mad and sad. And then I killed my mum and I shot some cops and uh, what I wanted, I, no, I shot some Wall now, Street guys. I'm sorry, I'm confused. And he was, I mean, they kind of hint that he's going to shoot himself. Yeah, but, but there nobody, was no point no. when I always thought he was actually going to no. shoot himself. Because I, then he's not the Joker. Then he's not the Joker. the Joker doesn't live. I thought at minimum he's going to shoot De Niro and then maybe attempt to shoot himself. Yeah. Which he doesn't end up doing, obviously. And then the bit where, like, he gets... <laughs> oh, we're up to the part of this, our favourite uh, bit. Remember that bit when... But he gets arrested and he's in the car and, and they all recognise him and, they, and then he gets out and he's standing up there and he's got the audience clapping. He's in cell Jesus. But it also feels at the same time like you did... The, he made his point... Already, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like he knows that he's seen already. Everyone saw just it that extra on the moment of like because apparently they're not taking this. I thought this. he they're was just gonna, playing it live, but I thought the point of that might be that he gets away and then he's got like an underground like following, but he still gets arrested. Yeah, huh? So they got him eventually, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did. So I just but that's where he belongs, Arkham Asylum, where he can scheme. Yeah, and and murder nurses or whatever he's, he's up to in there. Yeah. Great stuff. You know what the other thing is? Todd Phillips has talked about how the reason he made this is because he can't make comedy films because it, it's too woke and comedy's yeah, dead or yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. I have some... Hang on. I, uh, this, Com- this. Comedy to me, there's... And, and I'm not just talking about things that are political, politically correct, correct and safe or whatever. There's excellent comedy at the moment which does... To, you know, go places that, you know, that people would consider edgy or have, yeah, whatever I mean, you want to frame it. Uh, here it's, we go. Uh, mm. This is from... Uh, John Visklosky on Twitter. Uh, mm. Todd Phillips explains why I left comedies for Joker. Go try to be funny nowadays in this woke culture. Uh, and John says, it's so true. In this time of increased sensitivity and recognition of historically marginalised voices, it's just impossibly funny. I mean, other than Parks and Recreation, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Bob's Burgers, Last Man on Earth, Schitt's Creek, Bojack Horseman, Superstore, Glow, Big Mouth, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, Two Dope yep. Queens, Black Lady Sketch Show, American Vandal, Fleabag Veep, Russian Doll, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Barry, The Good Place, Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, Full Frontal with Samantha B, The Daily Show, and it just goes on. Yeah, exactly. There is excellent comedy now, and I think the I think he, cause, I think think it's because people are like, we don't, want Hangover 4 or whatever. Yeah. Cause we, did, we didn't like the sequels. Yeah. Because that style of comedy. 3 wasn't even a comedy. No, it was... I don't know what it was. Yeah. But, yeah, I think maybe he felt like that his style had gotten passed by and, and we were, people have moved past that. That If that... I, I think if he said that, I'd be like, yeah, well, that's... Yeah. You know, you, if he was like, well, I made a certain type of film and I feel like that might not play necessarily uh-huh. now, then I'd be like, well, that's yeah. fair enough. And you've, and you've moved on from that. Because a lot of comedy directors... They do that. Look at Adam McKay. Now he kind of makes movies about Wall Street and and you know and, and yeah. Seth Rogen and mm. uh, Evan, Evan Goldberg, Goldberg doing yeah. Preacher and, yeah. and stuff like that. And the Boys, yeah, which have funny elements to them, but they are not comedies. Yeah, and they still even they're like, well, if we want to do some gross out, out stuff in that, we can. But I just think to to be like, well, and that you know you can't say anything anymore. You can, yeah. but just say something interesting. Yeah, I think uh, it's a lot of people are pointed towards. I think. Char- they're like, oh, well, Charlie Day said you can't say anything anymore either. But he didn't say that. He basically said, well, now because we're making this and times have changed, we have to look into what yeah. what is acceptable and not acceptable and we have to adjust based on that. And there's a reason that It's Always Sunny is still good mm. is because they look at what how the world has changed. That's 14 years old, yeah, that show. Yeah, for sure. And it's you, you watch the evolution of these characters. Like they've done blackface and just ridiculous, like horrible stuff. 
mm. but it's always in the context of the era and it's not making fun of people. It's making fun of them. Yeah. And, and all people who also are like yes. that, mm. I guess. Yeah. It, yeah. So I just, I don't know. I just, the fact that we're like, well, comedy is, no, it's not. Like that particular type of com comedy is not interesting yeah. anymore. Uh -huh. I think that's what it is. Mm. But also it's PC gone mad and it's I will never not say that. <laughs> that's right. Ah. Oh. You know what? Okay, this is what I think this movie does do well. Here we yes, go, Mason. Here we go. Yeah, he's got his got his album. Got my table. listening face yeah, on. Yeah, he really does. I'm going to do one of these now. <laughs> Two hands. Two hands under the yeah. chin. I think. Let's talk about boys. The idea. I'd love to, but I think this movie is on the right track in terms of making these one-shot, different universe DC stuff. I don't. I don't think this is a complete hit for me, obviously. Yeah. But I really like the ideas of the idea of these self-contained universes. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's that's a good direction for these. For films. sure, yeah. Because people are obviously going out because they want to see something different from comic book movies. Yep. I don't, to me, this isn't a, something that I'm necessarily yeah. think is great, but people, a lot of people, obviously do. Or do, uh, yeah. do want to see different stuff. I want to see different stuff, but if I want to see a comic book movie, I just want to see some comic book stuff in it. I don't think that is. You want to see pages flipping like Ang Lee's Hulk. Exactly. That's <laughs> different right. Different panels. Yes. Yeah. I wanted Joaquin Phoenix's skin to be so rubbery. <laughs> they shoot a grenade at him and it just. <laughs> And bounces off, you know. Brilliant. Just, but just don't trick us. Yeah, I, we, I don't think people need to. If be you want to be like, this is a powerful drama about a man on the edge. Yeah, I'll watch that, but don't tell me it's the Joker when it's just a man. Arthur Fleck. Arthur, oh, the Arthur Fleck. So good. Mm. Do you like Easter eggs, Mason? I made an Easter egg video. Check it out. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I many do like great Easter, Easter eggs. Oh my goodness. Link that below if you want to check it out. Anyway, we're still obviously going to talk about this, but I've got some. If you want to, I've got some reviews here. I'm ready. People are written in. Uh, I'd say it's more positive, but there it, it is a mixed bag. Yes. But I'd say the generally the response we've got to people is positive. Uh, Perry says, uh, Joker movie is dark, deep, depressing, but a downright masterpiece. Don't take it as an excuse. Uh, read it as a warning. Not perfect, but close to it. Phoenix can act his pants off. His skinny little pants that he wears. <laughs> uh, Treasure says, hey guys, just saw Joker and boy, was it the worst movie ever. The movie was so boring, overhyped, pretentious and masturbatory. There were some good bits in the third act, but overall disappointing. The music was okay. I liked the score, actually. I thought it was, like, unnerving. At I can't remember Wilson. it. Yeah. yeah, I liked it. <laughs> uh, Robert says, Out of seeing The Joker definitely broadens the spectrum of comic book movies, or perhaps the, the best graphic novel film is a better description. Comparisons to Taxi Driver are given. The most beautifully depressing version of the world that does or doesn't exist. Best movie ever. Danny says, The Joker feels like a paint-by-numbers e uh, e edge, but it doesn't know what it where it doesn't know where it wants to point that edge. In five years' time, it'll be remembered for the memes it creates rather than the movie itself. And Marty G said something interesting. You know, Marty from the Great Mates group or whatever. Yep. Wonderful human being. Oh, yes. uh, it says, I think Joker is one of the best depictions of mental illness on film and an incredibly relevant commentary on how the government fails this sector of society, which I don't disagree with as well. Mm. Again, I think that comes down to the performance of it. Does He does feel like this man, this human being who's you know, he's just been kind of kicked around his entire life and, and not acknowledged and, you know, because even... In he finally feels seen. Yeah, well, not only that, but, like, the way that they just... We took away your funding for your for your social worker that didn't really do anything for you anyway. Like, yeah, those right. are things that actually... that That's not uncommon. Mm. And mental health, the way, it, you know, it is depicted in films. You know, you get autism head slapping and things like that. I think this does a better job of that. But, again, I think, for me, that's the performance. Yes. Anything else, Mason? That's about it, I think. Anyway, it's they made it, didn't they? Yeah. Also, you never asked me what the story was, so the joke's on you. Uh, that's right. That's but right. I'm twisting this genre on its head. So. Yeah, that's true. That's also true. God, we're so good at this. Was it even a review? What, if would, what, would what was it said? even a review if you didn't ask me what the story was? What would was? you have said, though, if I said, because you couldn't say it's the Joker? It, hypothetically, Mason. Yes. Or pathetically, what would you say? I'd say uh, uh, it's dirty New York and there's a sad man in it. <laughs> Pretty good, basically. Pretty good, right? Pretty goddamn yes. good. Yes. All right. You know what it's time for? What's it time for? What are we reading? Oh, what are we going to read? I'm doing the theme. What are we reading today? <laughs> well, well, well. We made it into the What Are We Reading segment of the podcast. That's right. Uh, what are you reading? Oh, good question. You know what I've been reading recently? I don't. And it's not a comic book or TV movie or anything related. My friend McKinley has a... Uh, a newsletter, and every week she sends it out. It's called the Whip It, and every week Whip it's, it, just, it's just like really interesting things. Whip it like, like the dog, like, or like whoosh. like the dog, like Whip It, Whip It, Whip It, Whip It. Uh, Whip it. And it's, so it's like it's just interesting. It's 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 meant to be like a like an anti hot take 
Uh, you know, because everything on the internet's hot takes. I love hot takes. It's, do you? But aren't you tired of hot takes sometimes? I love hot takes. Oh yeah. You didn't you hear me? But anyway, it's just a, it's just an, uh, 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 a newsletter about like interesting things that she's been thinking about and and looking at in a week. So the current episode, uh, current issue is about uh, minimalism, but also this statue of Neptune that appeared on the in the Canary that, that's in the Canary Islands. Where did that, that come from? It's somebody built it. Uh, is it is a, is a thing about chess grandmasters. It's just, oh. it's just bloody interesting stuff. And I What's just, that called? Uh, it's called The Whippet. Mm. So hang on, I'll see. If, I think it's at thewhippet.org. Let me just check. You don't have to check. No, I'm going to. You don't have to. I'm going to, but you'll link it below probably. I can I can think about it. Yeah, thewhippet.org. Right. Oh, uh, I reckon below, people yeah. should sign up to that. Because right. it's uh, real Weekly, real you say? We- weekly and very interesting. Fantastic. Yeah. It's, uh, okay, she's, here's how she sold it. Uh, fortnightly, oh, it's fortnightly. A fortnightly newsletter of interesting articles and ideas with guaranteed 0% contemporary politics because, oh my God, sometimes you need a break. Ain't that the truth? Yes. It's even filtered into our cinemas, Mason. Yeah, scientific discoveries, news articles about heists, bizarre animals, forgotten history, uh, what everyday life is like for, say, a Trappist monk or a female bodyguard. It's cool, cool stuff. Anyway. Excellent. Yes. Uh, we're still in the Joker talk, so I wanted to ask you. Yes. Do you think we'll get a sequel to this when, and uh, spoilers, or whatever, and there's going to be Batman? And do you want to see this Batman? Because I don't know if I do. I don't think I, don't I do see either. The yeah. the realest Batman in the world. And they're going to have to wage Joaquin Phoenix up. 20 years? Wait. 10 yeah, years. whatever. 15 years. Did this X-Men days I guess they were all yeah. the same age or whatever? Not really, no. Yeah, I guess also because I guess The Dark Knight is that version of Batman already. Also, yeah. I, I think also I, not only do I love the Heath Ledger performance, but I also felt like he, that Joker knew what he was doing and had an idea. Yeah, the very, like he's <laughs> he had a insane. Line. <laughs> and, and again, that's, that's not as realistic a universe, but it is closer to, it's closer to our universe than the Batman v Superman reality. Sure, yeah. And... I could see a man such as that existing mm. in in our world, and again, he is. That's way. It's that, well, see, that's a great example of. They've taken, Christopher Nolan's taken the continuity of of the comic book universe, and some of it is incorporated. At least yeah. some of it. Yes. Characters who act like the characters in the comic books. Batmobiles. Batmobiles, uh, and a villain who resembles the real one. And his parents got shot. Oh my god. <laughs> Those pearl, pearls went a flying, didn't yes. they? Yes. Uh, you know what I'm reading? I am reading. Uh, I've talked about this before, but I, I don't mind coming back to it. Uh, Tom Taylor, Trevor Hessine, and James Harron have all put together Deceased, which is the DC Marvel zombies, basically. Yes. Yeah, where right. the whole world is there's a zombie virus, which is, is a result of a miscalculation in Dark Side's anti life equation, equation, right? Which Cyborg brings to Earth, and it basically zombifies. He's like, whoopsie. Most of the planet. Yeah. But the interesting thing is uh, so there's one issue to go, and I think there's one spin-off thing which is also quite good as well it uh-huh. all, But because it, it all feels like one thing, where what happens when – and Marvel does, did this as well with Marvel Zombies, but I think what's it's interesting here as well because what happens if a speedster gets a zombie virus? How yeah. many people can they infect all at once? Yeah, And how do you sure. stop the fastest – being on the planet, yeah. even if you're Superman. That's true, you yeah. Know? And it just, and in this particular episode, it turns some characters that you're like, oh no, that's like the worst possible situation. Yeah, right. Because is there anybody here to stop these particular people? And because it's a parallel universe and it's a self contained thing, yeah. the worst case scenario can absolutely play itself out. Exactly. So yes. have you read Deceased yet? No. I would thoroughly recommend it. I see. And there's only one left. So, uh, bloody. Get your motor running, head out on the highway, oh, yeah. looking for some good artwork and some stories that are good and come your way. Yes. And read. But also method a truck stop. <laughs> okay. Some of those things are in deceased. You're gonna Fantastic. Have to get the You're nice. Get the meth by yourself. All right. Uh, anything else or do you want to do the next segment? Let's do the next. Oh, wait. No. Let's let's continue to talk and fill for a little couple more seconds. Hey? I'm ready to go what to the next. I'm that? ready I to go. Bloody, I, I don't need maybe. to wait. I'm happy but I would to like roll to, I just want to make sure episode. we haven't forgotten a single darn thing. I don't thing. think we have. Actually, no. Let's do, my let's do letters. Oh. The classic one was letters. Oh, letters. We love you. Some letters. They're only a day away. Hey, 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 hey. Don't crash your car. Yeah, don't do that. Uh, especially if you're going to write us a letter because you can reach the show at hashtag weeklyplanetpod on Twitter or shoot us over an email at weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Okay, quick quick Asian dating update. <sighs> Where are um, we? We have eight new matches, starting really? with Norman, 45. That's more than one a day, the Philippines. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not moving to the Philippines. Uh, that's, that's Abby from Poland. Yep. He, no, he'd murder you. Yeah, you know, he you know what, Me you know specifically? Yeah, all these. I'd murder him first. 
at this guy. I met that guy. Too. James, Bloomington, Indiana. What about Ben? He's got a tuxedo on. Nah, he's pretty a, nice. He's a racist. Okay. <laughs> well, he's what's he doing on AsianDating.com yeah. then? He's a, you know he's got like a self hate thing. It's okay, well, man. That's okay. All right. It's the way he was raised. I you get know it. what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any tweets there? I was, too, I was too busy looking at, busy looking at that. Okay, uh, this is from Super Sauron. I just started playing the Arkham games, and so far, I found I've so, so far I've found them amazing. This made me wonder about what superhero could make an amazing video game. I think Doctor Strange would be make a really good video game. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Yeah, because it's interesting because it depends on how you. Were, some are more difficult than others. Yeah. If you've got a street level brawly guy, you make a brawly game. If you've got okay. a Punisher, you do a shooter or whatever. But then if you've got like a Superman. Well, it's interesting. Yeah. We, we've talked about this a uh, number of times. The, the rumor was going to be that, is it Rocksteady? Yes. That makes the Arkham games. They were going to make a Superman game in a similar vein. But because Superman is unkillable, mm. it's not about stopping, you know, it's not about villains beating you yeah. up. It's kind of flying around the world. And, and apparently they're not making this also. Yeah, no, they're yeah. not. But, uh, you know, flying around saving cities. There is a game that is this. It's a PSVR game. It up, yeah. It's called Gigaton Rainfall. Oh, I played that. Yeah, and what do you think? It's good. Yeah. But there's an even more recent one on Steam Ooh. that's called Undefeated. Right. And it's basically a guy who kind of dressed like Connor Kent. Superboy. Yep. Oh, the black T-shirt Superboy. That's is that Superboy. Connor Kent? Yeah, that's Connor yeah. Kent, yeah. And it's that thing, he's unkillable. He's yeah. in a city where he, it looks incredible. you got to look well, at undefeated. this game. Undefeated. Is yeah. it on, so I could, could I get it on a PS4? I don't believe uh, so. Well, it's I'll just look, a demo. I'll look at a gameplay yeah. demo then. Please do. And it, it's and I wrote this one down specifically because it isn't, even though it's just a demo, three guys worked on it, but it's yep. one of those things that they seem to have nailed the core of what you would do with a Superman character. I don't know whether you could stretch that out over 20 hours and make it compelling, but yeah, like, right. the fight, the flight is really... Yeah. really good and it just like the combat works and yeah, yeah. you can't really be hurt because you, you just got to get to emergencies yeah. as quickly as you can and minimize the casualties and damage and so and i think whatever. it can something like that can be done yes the thing about gigaton rainfall that i found like the the gameplay works but i think it doesn't have re it doesn't really have any personality no it doesn't he's just yeah. like a he's like a, a generic he's he's sort of been yeah. sent by some sort of godlike figure mm. to earth to save it but it's just and again, you can fly around. You can blow up the planet if you want to. Yes. Like, but but it's it's just you're kind of just fighting these generic spaceships. There's a, there's an assortment of different ones, but it's kind of just like you're not fighting supervillains or any. No. You, you don't have a personality. It's no. kind of like you so, kind of wake from a pod or something at the start. Yeah. Isn't it? Like yeah. In like space, yeah. and then you fly down to Earth, and then and, and yeah, it's 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 interesting. It's pretty bare bones, but yeah, yeah. it's pretty bare bones. But I think if you took the, that mech it, it proves that that mechanism can be done. Yes. So if you were to take a Superman game, you could do that. I don't know if you'd want to do it first person though. No, I'd much rather. Yeah, Arkham style. I see that sweet person. cape. Yeah, uh, there was and a that sweet rig. Oh, you know what mm -hmm. he's dick. Uh, th um, <laughs> so there was also a cancelled Daredevil game that I always wanted to play. It was going to coincide with the movie. It was more comic related. There's like videos on how they're going to make it. A guy actually reached out to me once and said, like my uncle or dad worked on it. Do you want like the beta copy? That doesn't of it? sound true. At I all. know. And I'm like, yes, but th that never eventuated. Wow. But anyway, because my uncle works for Nintendo, so he can get you any Nintendo. Exactly, he, can get, he can get you Rob. He can, Rob. Get, you the, he can get you the light gun. Wow. Anything you want. Yeah. He can get me the unreleased Super Mario Brothers. Yep. Lost Worlds. Yeah, for sure. Even though you can get Buy that, that regardless. Now, yeah. Uh -huh, yeah, sure. Yeah, you can. <laughs> and at the time. Yeah. Yeah, so. And that was interesting because it was kind of Spider Man esque. Uh, yeah, you'd, you'd, you'd slide down rails. They, they had a trouble. They had trouble with like uh, they were going to make it open world, and then they had to kind of bring it like time constraints. Mean, meaning they brought it down to like smaller in scale, and you could use your echo vision to see through walls and whatever. I yeah, think yeah. a Daredevil game could could work really well, but I like the idea of um, like you said of tackling bigger, more interesting powers, and even. As uh, Super Sauron says here, someone like Doctor Strange, where yep. it's it's these powers that are just and not like an Ultimate Alliance bullshit. You just shouldn't lasers. Yeah, right, right. I'm talking like you've got the whole arsenal on of the Doctor Strange oh, powers and start, you can fly. Yeah, st from the start, throw yeah. people in mirror dimensions and whatever. I think I I feel like that a Doctor Strange would work better because you know talking Arkham games. You know Arkham Asylum is quite on rails, mm. but Arkham City is like and and this. Most recent Spider-Man game, yeah, are quite sandboxy. You can go anywhere. Yeah. I think I think a Doctor Strange would work better in the first category. Yes, because you could go. Okay, well now it's time to go into the mirror dimension. Well, that that's what I want. And I remember because when we talked about Arkham Origins a few like four or five years ago, now yeah. not the best one, not the best but one. Still but okay. Boss boss battles were pretty good, but it was yeah. kind of unpolished. Um, 
And you brought up a good point about how you like the first one of that the most because it's so focused. Yeah. And the more I think about it, the more I think you might be right. I think technically Arkham City yes. is the best game uh-huh. in terms of like in terms of like scale and story and mechanics and everything. But there is something about that one place, one objective. It feels more yeah. like an adventure the character would actually have. Yes. There's no like, well, I could stop the Joker from poisoning the city, but I've got to collect all these rings. Yeah, exactly. You know? yeah. I'm going to get a bonus and a new hat. So I know that the studio who made Origins are currently, well, they've been teasing another Arkham game. Mm. And like, it's kind of a sequel to their prequel. Yes. And I kind of, it probably won't be, but I'd kind of love it to be, strip out the Batmobile and all these other mechanics and yep. just take it back to... Of that really tight story with some excellent kind of boss battles you can yeah 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 you know, right. kind of I- interjected in there instead of being like it's the city again you know yeah because like, I feel like it's the same with Spider Man games and the only re- and the, one of the reasons though why I love the new Spider Man game is because they rebuilt New York and it's all new and they redid the mechanics but a lot of those Spider Man games are just like it's New York again you're in a city again yes you're, you're collecting uh-huh. the same thing again you're fighting you know you come across a random crime. But with Spider-Man, what else do you do with that character? Because yes. that's where he is. He's like yeah. built for he's built for open world. You can't put him in the suburbs. It's Not weird, really, as, yeah. as uh, Homecoming proved. So yeah, you couldn't really strip it down and do like an Arkham Asylum Spider-Man game. Yeah, I I don't think or it no. wouldn't, would be a because you'd have to do it Superman sixty four style, which is like a super villain's trapped him in a in a yeah. special dimension, but just happens to have a lot of things to swing from. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. and I think also you're not making the best use of the Spider-Man character if you put him in a bunch of corridors. No, you know? absolutely not. So anyway. Uh, no, except if he wants to walk on the roof. Oh, my goodness. This is an email from Hugo Norman. Speaking about Spider-Man, mm. uh, I've just started playing Spider-Man PS4, really enjoying it. want to read some of the Spider-Man comics. What would you guys recommend as some of the best Spider-Man comics? Uh, the, that recent Spider-Man life story I, story I read is excellent. And yes. also, you don't have to, it means you don't have to read all the crap. That's, that's, that's the main problem with, with Spider-Man. Yeah, it gives you a good overview of, yeah. of all that. So. I, th- I mean, I, I think... You could really jump in anywhere. Superior Because I would Spider-Man. recommend I would Superior Spider-Man, yeah. but that is also, that's a version where Peter Parker is not Spider-Man for the most part. No, but I think that's okay because I think also if you're going, if he's writing into this podcast, he yes. probably has an idea who Spider-Man is. And he's played Spider-Man yeah. PS4, so, so he yeah, definitely does. Exactly, so I don't think he needs an origin story of Spider-Man. I, he knows enough about it where he could read a story that's not just traditional Peter Parker mm. stuff. Yes. I'm just Googling best Spider-Man stories and seeing what yes. else. What do you think about Craven the Hunt? That's not bad. I Craven's guess. Last Hunt? Craven's Last Hunt, sorry, yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, what else have we got here? What else do you think? Maybe go back. I, you know what I would do is probably go back and read... Watch the movie Venom. Watch it was record-breaking. Now it's been bitten by Joker. Yeah. But I wonder how the Todd McFarlane Spider-Man... I think visually it's probably still oh, very that good. Probably, I wonder yeah. if that whole... Yeah, I wonder... I wonder Plot wise and dialogue wise, if it still holds up, but in mm. the in the nineties, Todd McFarlane, later creator of Spawn, got his new. He was the he was the artist on Spider Man, in Amazing Spider Man in the eighties. Yes, and then they gave him his own Spider Man book, just called Spider Man, and yeah, that ran. Right. You know, it, I mean, that's it's not still going. I don't think he's <laughs> he's not still drawing it. He's making uh, Spawn. Oh my god, uh, that that's now the longest running independently produced comic book, like yes. drawn by the same. Guy, I think. Okay. Yeah. I've, I've, but I reckon maybe, maybe try the Todd McFarlane Spider-Mans, just the first. Mm. They, were, they were meant to be like, okay, well, you know, this this is this is more epic and it's, you know, it's it's just, just huge stories and great villains. Yeah, right. First okay. villain was the Lizard, if I recall. Okay. I've got another one here because I just went through, I've got my comicsology open. Nice. open. Uh, there's Spider-Man Blue by Jeff Loeb and Tim Sale who did um, Long Halloween. Long Halloween, which I love. And it's like an origin story of Peter Parker. No, it's not an origin story. It's more like just bef- as he's dating Gwen Stacy. Yes. And it's, and it's kind of, and from, I haven't read it in a long time, but I oh. remember really enjoying that. I think if you want like a classic Spider-Man, that might be the one to go. Yes. If you want something new, I think it might be worth looking at that J.J. Abrams. Um, oh, and his son. And his, uh, Henry Abrams book. Just because it's the first one, you don't really need, need to know anything else. It's not connected to anything. I'm not yeah. guaranteeing that it's going to, you know that it's going to go on to be amazing, but I think yeah, yeah. if you want a if you want a recent one that you don't really yeah. need to know anything, it might be a good point to jump in on. Or the most recent Miles Morales Spider Man. Oh right, okay. Because yeah. Miles Morales is in the comic, is in the video game. Yeah, or maybe even the first run of Ultimate Spider Man as well, because yeah, sure. that's that's a pretty good run as well. It's continuity free and yeah. it's fresh and modern. And they've 
and then Miles Morales turns up and whatever and so forth. Yeah, nice. Also, just watch Spider Verse; it's the best thing in the world. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, this is from Sir Doctor Vlad the Inhaler, aka Hulk. There's a lot of things going on there. Yeah. Says, can you do an episode on various oft brands Superman like Hyperion, Plutonian, Homelander, etc.? Could be good. Hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. And then we can make him fight at the end. Yeah. Nice. Kiss. Yeah. Nice. Uh, <laughs> Who's I, got the most super kiss? Mm. It's Superman, though, isn't it? Because he can kiss you and make you forget. That's a good point. <laughs> you know? They could all be friends at the end. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And they come to, he's like, you don't remember, but we all are great friends and we kiss. Mm. All the time. Yeah, I think that would be an interesting. I think that, yeah, are you up for that at some point? Yes. That feels like right up your alley because you know a lot of like characters that are from a weird dimension that, yeah. are, that just a Superman metaphors Boy, do or I ever. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Anything else? Uh, Maybe if they ever make another Superman movie, we can do Yeah, that. this is from Mike. Unfilmable movies to streaming series ideas. Mm. Uh, hey, James and May, so for most of our lives we had to accept certain comics or books were unable, unable to be made into movies due to the amount of content I that never accepted crammed into it. two hours. With streaming services dumping enormous amounts of money making series, these restraints <sighs> have fast disappeared. I would give a kidney to see a series of Saga. Is there oh, any other long-form yeah. graphic novels, books, or any other previously thought to be unfilmable properties that you guys would love to see adapted properly in a streaming service? I would like to see... James Robinson's Starman, which I've mentioned before, which is my oh, favourite self, stop self-contained. About it. But that won't happen <laughs> for a number of reasons. Uh, it's a rights thing, is it's it? It's a rights thing. Uh, James Robinson has the rights to that version of Starman and they can't use it without his permission, which is why in that upcoming Stargirl series, yes. Starman's not in that, even though he, he's supposed to be, in the comic books, he would be that the, the Joel McHale's character. Yeah, right, in okay. The, in the version oh, that's, that's right. coming to TV, he's, it's that. a different character. Uh, but I would like to see that because it's super epic and you meet some of Superman's rel- you know, relatives back in the past mm. and it's got magic and it's got sci-fi and it's got human relations. I love human relations. And it's got a gritty city. A gritty city. Which is, well, it's not. It's a nice city. It's a very strange city. It's Opal City. It's, well, it's that really sounds nice. very, that does sound uh, nice. and, and that's what you want. You want a city for authenticity. And so do you think that is adaptable now though? Uh, it is. Ad- I think it would be adaptable, but again, rights issue, it won't be. Okay, uh, yeah. and they're using some of the characters for yeah, with other things, for, yeah. yeah, for other things. But ah, that'll fall gi- down. Don't given worry given <laughs> unlimited amounts of money, yes, that's what I would like to see. It's interesting because there's there is a bunch of stuff considered unfilmable that has been filmed or is like even, Watchmen, even Watchmen, Dune, Dune or is it yeah. June? It's, it's, it's June. It's June. Uh, I just uh, Transmetropolitan comes up here in my in my Google. I think Transmetropolitan is probably five to ten years off being able to do it properly. Yeah, right. Because that city is insane. For sure, yeah. So I think you could I mean, they said that about Judge Dredd too, didn't they? Yeah. Stallone Judge Dredd. Yeah, but they didn't. They fucked that up. Yeah, they made a bad one, didn't they? It's bad movie. Yeah, it's a bad movie. So I think Transmetropolitan would be interesting as a series, but... And Saga was designed to be unfilmable, as I understand it. Oh, okay. Like if they they were like, I feel like Saga's pretty cinematic. Yeah, these days. With the budget, you could definitely pull that off. Again, like Saga was, I think, again... Create I, as I understand it, it was it was like the idea was well, there's no way we could make a film out of this, so it exists solely as mm. a as a comic book property. But I think that was maybe a few years before Netflix and Amazon Prime had all the yeah, money. Yeah, okay. So I see what you're saying. So maybe it, maybe it is filmable now. Yeah, I think that's very much going away. I'm not mm. saying you could necess- You have to give it to the right people for it to be yeah. successful. But uh-huh. I also think. I don't want to. I don't like watered down versions of very complicated, even visually complicated things because just don't do it. It's like that Powers TV show or whatever that one you of want. the worst. Yeah, like don't just don't make it. Make yeah. a different thing. Mm. And I haven't seen Preacher, but it, from what I did see, but it, it, it was kind of like, what? Just get to the main thing of, of Preacher. <laughs> I haven't. I haven't finished it yet. And I'm. Uh, it starts out really strong. And mm. then I think it takes a dip and it kind of slows down a lot. But I, I should finish it. It's got, you know, I've heard a lot of people aren't super happy with the ending. But yeah. I, I, I like a lot of the people involved in that. So yeah. maybe, maybe I'll... I'm re- actually, you know what is being made and would be very difficult in live action, Invincible. They're doing an animated version. Yeah, right. Which is probably smart because that is impossible on a TV budget. But then again, looking at... Um, Homelander and whatever and so forth. That's true. But then again, that But one, he, he exists in a regular world for the most part. Well, that's true. And that is also, it's not as action heavy as you think it think, is. Yeah. Or as it sets itself up. There's a lot of people the, in boardrooms. Yeah, exactly. And for the yeah. most part, like it, it's people having a conversations in a boardroom and then somebody gets their heart punched yeah. out or whatever. That's not as, as difficult as. Invincible is like flying to alien in the world. street and tearing people in half and yeah, yeah. blood and guts. And yeah. 
and know. whole intergalactic societies yeah. and, and what have you. So it's so. probably better animated. Yeah. Is that the show, though? I think that is the show. I love shows. Uh, Ed, uh, this is actually this is from just from uh, Kay Marshall. Mm. Uh, edgy film opportunity missed. I just see this last one. Uh, the edgy episode was great. Thank you. But I can't believe you missed out on the dumbest and or greatest film ever, Equilibrium. Do you remember that one? <laughs> Christian Bale and they're doing gun kung fu. Do you remember that? Gun Carter. Gun Carter, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that movie. Yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> Emotions. He, sa- he said, he, especially with the explanation of how their battle system is better, the gun carter, even though it boils down to standing in the middle of the room and hoping everyone around you has an IQ below 20. <laughs> that really is how it works <laughs> yeah, in that is. movie. Well, look, we, we're gonna, I think we'll do an edgy movie uh, episode yeah, again we'll sometime. But there's, there's so many. A lot of people said some, some of the Mark Miller movies and that. Yeah. But which, I, which I don't know. I think the only one of that I can think of that really fits that is Kick-Ass 2. Yeah, because I think Kickass One isn't like look at this. It's as much as Kickass yeah. Two is, and I also think it's it's also kind of a generational thing. I think the ones we went for were the ones that were edgy when we were yeah, that's teenagers true. or like even we, pre teenagers. We can adapt. Yeah, we can Man, adapt. We can, we can we, adapt we, and we, learn. <laughs> so like, but so by the time like a Kickass comes out, yeah. from like a, any kind of Mark Miller property, we're like we see we see the the wheels turning at this. We yeah. get it. But back in the day, we were like, oh my god. So we just, so we just, uh, what if your superheroes were real? Oh my god. Anyway, bring us home, Mason. Uh, absolutely, I'm going to. He doesn't want to, everybody. No, I'm going to. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thanks, everybody, for donating to the uh, oh, the, the, terrific. The, 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 the best charity uh, campaign. Uh, where you're crushing it out there. We really appreciate it, and Definitely. the world appreciates it also. Yeah. Uh, thank you, thanks everybody for subscribing and telling a friend, uh, giving us a nice review. James, do you have a nice you review there? No idea. This is from AJ Arden. Uh, five stars. You can do this just in app. Jacinta Arden. Yes. PM of New Zealand. She should be getting back to being a mother than listen, not listening to podcasts. But she's got a lot. She's she's doing. She's you know maybe she's doing raising she, kids or whatever. She's bloody wonderful. I wish our prime minister. Was, was not our current prime minister <laughs> yes, that's right. or any of the other candidates for prime minister? Correct. They're all bad. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, it says weekly must. Drew Cinder Arden says, as I navigate the many podcasts, I try to jam into my free time. I can't imagine she'd have much free time. That's right. You know, with all the world leadering she's doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, my Monday morning weekly planet is always first up. It's fun. I get some news and the guys never take themselves too seriously. Nobody has ever quite made me want to grab that gem like they do. Thank or you, like Cinder. Grab that gem. Sheep. <laughs> Got him. Got him. Got the, got the country about, of New Zealand. Because we, we have the joke in Australia that New Zealanders have sex with sheep. They have a for I us, met right? some New Zealanders yeah. who were like, that's you. And I'm like, that's you. Yeah. And there was a, there was, we just shouted, that's you wow. for an hour at each other. But then the New Zealander was like, that's a you. E-W-E. <laughs> and then they boned it. Got him again. Typical. Got him. Typical New Zealander. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, good stuff. Uh, if you'd like to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies. Yes. If you'd like to chuck in a buck, we would appreciate that. We'd you can it. also click on the Amazon link in the episode description. If you'd like to purchase, I'm going to say some Joker DVDs on uh, some maybe I'll put Bat- some, I'll put Batman down, animated man. series Joker. That's a good one. Yeah. I'll put that down. Uh, put that down. Uh, uh, you can also go to Planet Broadcasting. Dot com. Sign up to our fantastic newsletter from the fantastic Rob Collings. One of the best. He's at the Weekly Planet on Twitter. Mm. Interestingly, I'm at Wikipedia Brown on Twitter, That's and so on Instagram, I'm Nick Maso N I C K M A S. I thought you were going to say something different then, like you changed one of those things because oh. you went interestingly, and then you paused and pointed at me, and I thought you were ready for like a revelation. Um, no, nah, maybe next week, but probably thing. not. No, same, same thing. Stuff, yeah. Why mess with success? Uh, you're Mr. Sunday Movies everywhere. Correct. Uh, I mess with success. Let's see. We got we got uh, t-shirts on tpublic.com. Thank you to the Brute and the Basilisk and Rackham for all our musical themes. Some of the best. It's a show, I reckon. I reckon it is. Yes. Uh, next week we will be looking at uh, the Breaking Bad movie. I would have liked to have done this the series. Uh, we, we there's no, no time. time. Unfortunately, yeah. I really wanted to give it a rewatch, but I don't think I can watch 50 hours of Breaking Bad no. this week. What's your opinion on the Fly episode? I like it a lot. Yeah, me too. Some people, a lot of people hate it. Well, a lot of people hate Ryan Johnson who directed that. That's oh, probably I see. no right. people hated that at the time. <laughs> but I also with the thing with that episode is, it's one episode among fifty. Yeah. So it's not like that. That's always the show. It's like if you don't like that one, it you've got the rest of the matter. You got the rest of the sh- yeah. Right? You know yeah. the thing about that one is. And this sounds like one of that poor marketing thing. Well, I remember it, don't I? So it must be good. Yeah. But I, that one stands out to me. And also yeah. there's a lot of tension in it yeah. because there are elements which are unfolding and you think it's going to go certain yeah. ways and it kind of zigs mm-hmm. and zags. And, and it's about a fly and I yeah. love flies. 
What do you think of the episode where he throws the pizza on the roof? That's the best episode. It's the best episode. <laughs> the right? guy who lives in that house. Yeah. He's just people come to his house and throw pizzas yeah. on the roof and every day he has to go in the Oh, in real life, right. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's good. terrible. Oh, my God. Why waste the pizza? Just eat the pizza. Yeah, but w- you'd do it, right? Yeah. Buy, I mean, that's something I would You'd buy two pizzas, I think, because you support a local business. That's true. You buy two pizzas, probably mm. get a good deal Yeah. the pizzas. And then you get to throw a pizza on a man's roof that didn't deserve it. Do you think the local pizza place they sell pizzas? They're like, they're like, can we use your, can we mm. use your house as a filming location? It'll be great. And he's like, okay. <laughs> I think if you ordered a pizza, I think the pizza shop in the local area would do. Is this for throwing? Because we won't cut it. Like it'll freeze. Oh yeah, out. for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I heard that was one take. I want to. I, I want to believe it is. Yeah. I don't know whether that's true. If not, I want to see the outtakes <laughs> of him furiously flinging pizzas oh. and missing. Anyway, anything else? Uh, that's the whole show, I think. Great. Thank you, everybody, for supporting us and the charity campaign and just in general. And sorry we didn't love the Joker, all right? We apologise. But also, uh, you're welcome for not loving the Joker for people who didn't love the that's Joker. That's so true. Uh, grab that gem, you guys. We'll see you next week. And goodbye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. I mean, if you want. It's up to you.